Hey everybody, it's me. I'm back. I'm settled into my new place, which is now in New Haven, Connecticut. And although I am in a much larger laboratory space now, uh, I have to go into these workrooms, undisclosed locations, where I can uh, mess around and make these videos if I have an extra five or ten minutes on my hands. And now that I'm here, we're starting to use Apnea a lot more in what I've been using. And so there's going to be a slight shift in emphasis from SPM, which is what I was using back at IU, to some of the same concepts that we're trying to do, but in AFNI. Okay, so that's my plan for the foreseeable future. And also, just to let you guys know, on Saturday I'm going to be traveling to UCLA for the Neuroimaging Training Program. It's a really cool program. They bring in cutting-edge people from all over the world to discuss cutting-edge research, cutting-edge cutting edge methods and it should be good times and I hope to report every day or at least every day about what we're learning there just to give people the the scoop on what's going on but today what I want to talk about is something called conjunction analysis and I'm surprised I haven't talked about this before because it's very useful in determining whether a certain voxel or group of voxels is responsive to more than one contrast so what we mean by that is that a single voxel passes the same test statistic. It can be our threshold at uh, you know, P less than 0.01, P less than 0.05, whatever we want. And then we want to see whether that holds for two or more contrasts. And the resulting mass we get allows us to say whether it's only for one contrast, uh, the other contrast, or for both of them combined. Yeah. Okay, so to do this, I'm going to just load up a, a pretty simple conjunction analysis that I did. And I'll post some of this code on the blog, but uh, let me just figure out where it is here. So it is a very simple script called conjunction analysis. So what's going on here is that I have this group level analysis. Here it's called all timings. And within each of those, I have different statistical maps that I'm interested in. So in this case, map 1 and map 7. These are T statistic maps that I'm interested in. Now, this is the basic setup. If I wanted to add more, I could, you know, instead of variable A being this, variable B being this, I could have dash C and then add something else. You know, I could have multiple contrasts if I wanted to. And then this 3D calc tool, very useful tool, allows me to basically say, where can I find the contrast of each of those? And what number should I assign to those voxels which pass both contrast thresholds? Now here, I have a minus 2.668 plus 2 times step b minus 2.668. So where am I getting these numbers in particular? This is going to vary according to your study, and I'll show you how I got these in a second. But this is the basic setup of the 3D calc command I'm using to create a conjunction map. So how did I get those guys? Well first I'm going to go to this all timings data set that I was talking about before. Okay. Just load it up, looks a little bit janky because don't have a really good underlay. But here is what I'm talking about. So this is going to be based on how many subjects I have because number of subjects determines degrees of freedom, determines our critical T threshold. And in this case, let's say I was interested in an uncorrect P value of 0.01. So a very useful thing to do is to just click right here, go to set P value, and enter 0.01. Very useful trick to do. And what it will do is automatically place the slider so that it's at a p, uh, voxel wise uncorrected p value of 0.01. So I know the t statistic is 2.668. Yeah? And these two particular t maps I'm interested in are number one, yeah, and number seven. Just for whatever reason, I'm not going to get into details why that is, but those are the two that I'm interested in. So the 3D calc command is saying where are both of these passing a value of 2.668 for their t statistic. So if I just ran that conjunction analysis script, you know, this is what it looks like, 3D calc. Remember A is the placeholder for my first variable, B is for my second variable, and in this expression in between these single quotes, I'm using those to then create my conjunction map. So basically just fill in over here, you know, you'll have a little template to work with. 
what your t statistic values are for whatever threshold you're interested in and you can add more and more if you want now one thing that happens with creating these conjunction maps is they're based on a base 2 system okay so i'm not going to get into it too much mainly because i don't understand that much but if you were to add a third thing it would be four times step say c minus 2.668 and so on i'll also include a link to the to Gung Chen's homepage where he explains this more. Because I would be lying if I actually said that I understood why they're using, you know, 2, 4, 8, and so on. I probably could figure it out, but I'm also inveterately lazy. Anyway, this all gets spit out into this conjunction map. Remember, prefix is just what we want to call our output. And if I load that up with, along with this anatomical standardized space underlay, map on top of that. Okay, this is going to look all nice and beautiful. Here's my conjunction map, and first thing is first, you know, you're probably not going to have this issue. My defaults are to have the resampling set to cubic. I'm going to set that back to nearest neighbor because the actual values are just going to be one, two, three, and any interpolation is going to really throw that off. So here's what we have here. This conjunction map, if you look at the value right here in this overlay, Okay, so orange is 2, and that's where contrast B was significant, above the threshold of you know, 2.668 for the T value. 1 is in yellow, and that's where contrast 1 was significant. But red is what we're really interested in, and that is where both are significant. And notice it's taking on the value of 3 right here. So if I wanted to create a compelling map for whatever reason, what I would do is I would just increase the slider until it is above, say, 2. So all I'm left with is the value of 3. In other words, the conjunction where the effects were both significant for those voxels. And after that, this is basically like any other map. And let's say I ran plus sim and determined for voxelized p less than 0 .01, 0 .01, I need a cluster extent of 59 at least. That's going to get rid of a lot of the schmutz, and my report just shows two clusters which pass that conjunction analysis threshold. Okay, so pretty neat. It's a very useful analysis to do. Uh, some people call these intersection maps. Same thing, but they're just useful to visualize where you have two contrasts which both pass whatever threshold that you specified. Again, it's up to you, PLS in 0.05, PLS in 0.01, whatever you want, but just remember it's going to be dependent on the number of subjects that you have. If you have a ton of subjects, then the t-value is going to be more or less the same no matter what you do. But I hope it helps. I'll put up some code. You guys can play around with that. Hope you like my new digs in this bunker that I've been able to find in Haskins. <laughs> it's a great place. It really is. I just need some alone time once in a while. And I will see you guys next time.